Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Now today, as I sometimes do, I'm currently looking out my window and what a lovely day it is. Um, finished school early so I thought well I'd better film this video because the object in question has to go back soon. So if I pan round, you'll see that today we're looking at a Hornby B1. Now this is breathtakingly gorgeous. Um, it's actually Jacob Boric's model, bought it a couple of months ago online, um, and it's just stunning, it really is. Um, there is actually nothing I can fault with it, so I suppose we better get on to um, opening the box. Now this is... Uh, the boxes, you just got uh, that stuff under there, and this is R3000 BR460 class B1 Sir Harold Mitchell, and it is in BR late um, crest. Minimum radius is second, I'd assume, uh, and you've just got a top view, and if we turn around, uh, Got got some brief history, so if you'd like to pause and read that, feel free. Um, and up there. Now this the running number of this one is six one two four three, and you've just got there. So loco number six one two four three represented in this pack was outshot from North British Locomotive Company in Glasgow, fourteenth of October nineteen forty seven, and named Sir Harold Mitchell. Withdrawn 4th of May 1964, that's a very interesting date, I've just uh, realised. 4th of May was when, I, I, from the top of my head, the trams were withdrawn in Wellington CBD. So there's a little New Zealand fact for you um, on today. Uh, so you get 4th of May 20, 1964, it was withdrawn and cut up in Troon, 31st of July 1964. So... I mean, this was not one of the uh, survivors, unfortunately. But um, without further ado, get on with opening the box. Now, this is the new-ish style Hornby ice tray. So you've got a oh, you've got a lovely sleeve there. We'll put to one side, and we're left with the block of ice, as it is commonly known. So if we get into it, oh look, there's the. So you just got the tray. Now this is very similar to Barkman locomotive packaging now. So they're following the trend as Hornby. Um, first thing you notice, er, uh, go away. Um, if you didn't know that what that is, that was the dreaded DCC jacket. And we'll bring in the instructions. Thompson B1 class, DCC ready slash fitted slash sound. And um, this one's only DCC ready. Um, you just got general running hints, routine maintenance, uh, where to oil it, accessories, body removal, um, lube points here, yeah, close coupling assembly, and sound and DCC ready. And then um, where to fit the details. So I think, yes, this came with transit screws when Jacob got it, I think. So that came with that. And then there's... I don't, I never get this TV suppression rubbish. I don't even know what that is. Um, but yeah, so let's get open this model, shall we? I might just zoom in the camera a bit. There we go. So we've zoomed in the camera and we will get this thing open. So firstly, there's a whole bunch of details. Uh, now, a couple of the details are missing from this. I think it's at Jacob's layout. I just got this uh, tray thingy. So what have we got? We've got... Oh yes, I'm going to have fun detailing this. There is a chain link coupling in there. And what looks like some steps. The steps won't be fitted because um, Jacob's layout is only second radius and therefore if the steps were fitted uh, the loco couldn't go round them. So. They'll just be left in the packaging. Got the standard brake, brake rigging. That will all be fitted. Um, and a tension lock. 
which was on the front, which I removed for the review, just for um, looking nice. And you've also got this, which will be fitted as well, which is a little brake vacuum pipe, rather. So, we open up the tray. Open up the tray. Oh, what have I? What have I dropped? What have I dropped? Ah, now there. What? What is this? I I don't actually know what that is, people. Can you please help me? I don't know what that is, and I um would like to know because it's just found its way into the packaging. So you got block of ice thing. Take the loco out. Ugh. Ah. Packaging. It's a nice packaging, but it can be annoying to get the loco out sometimes. So, um, what we'll do now is just for the purposes of this video, of this review, I won't hold the loco up like I would do. I'm actually going to drop the camera because it is very heavy and the detail is quite immense. So, um, we'll drop the camera and we'll have a look at it uh, in, in, in a better angle, really. Right, guys, so we dropped the camera and got the loco right here on the cutting mat. Um, it's a lovely model, really. It weighs an absolute bomb, to my surprise. Um, but there we go. So, if I zoom in, and it saves me, um, you know, oh, slight out of focus there. There we go. So we've got the lovely nameplate there, Sir Harold Mitchell. And a very nice smoke box detail. Uh, lovely, separately fitted handrails running right the way down the boiler, um, go to the running plate, uh, got some lovely detail there, that's not going to focus is it, no, that's as far as I'm going with the, the zooming thing, uh, so got some nice, nice detail there in terms of, I actually don't know, that might be to fill the sanding gear, um, who knows, uh, ah, focus camera, um, now, the wheels are actually quite stunning, to be honest. Got some lovely uh, linkage there. When this thing moves, it moves. It really does. It's quite, quite stunning. Um, now, got the uh, leading bogey there. And some nice buffer beam detail. Um, and some lamp irons. No, camera won't focus. Okay. But, um... Got some very nice detail as we head up the smoke box door. A lovely separately fitted smoke box dart. And the shed code is 65A. Comments below with what that is, that would be appreciated. Um, so we go up, we've got some nice funnel detail in the uh, the bracket for the uh, lamp. Where the lamp would go and we'll head across. Got a, so, some... Um, now that is the dome, the dome, and the picky people will notice that a safety valve was missing. Now I went over there with to Jacob's house the other, or well, a few months ago actually, when he first got this, and it was there at the start of the day, and then it wasn't there at the end of the day. So it's somewhere missing. I'm sure we can get a hold of one spare, um, but it, yeah, it's quite <laughs> interesting how that's turned out. You've got a lovely uh, turned brass whistle, um, and, uh, oh yes, un over there, I'll raise the camera in a bit to give you some overhead detail, because I have made some adjustments, and um, so there, there's the boiler, and you've got some washout plugs there, and uh, there's the cab steps, and the number of 61243, and uh, some nice hand-fitted uh, handrails there. Uh, so, yeah, it's a it's a lovely model. Uh, that like that segment, the actual locomotive, is quite nice too. So if we turn it around, the other side is virtually the same. Um, yes. So I will raise the camera and we'll have a look at the tender and what I've done to the tender. Right, so we've got the tender here, and um, what I did yesterday, which was Wednesday, is I fitted a coal load. Um, now, this is what I've done 
is I've basically just taken the um, the ready Hornby fitted coal load and stuck some Woodland Scenics coal on top of it, and it actually looks very good. Um, it like and I'll take a look at the cab detail in a minute because I'll have to unscrew the tender from the loco to have a look at it, but it is quite lovely. Uh, how it's improved the look of the model quite a lot, um, and yeah, so. The tender itself is very nice. I think it's just a standard Thompson tender, or is it? No, it'll be a Thompson probably. But um, we'll zoom in on. Oh dear, right oh there. So you just got a lovely um, emblem of the Lake Crest on there, and lovely lining. Forgot to mention on the rest of the loco, there is some very nice lining along the boiler bands and on the cab side. Um, and then we'll move on. Dun, 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 dun. Got some nice um, detail on the back of the tender, uh, including a vac pipe, uh, a hook, and uh, I forgot to mention on both ends they are sprung buffers. And now not everyone minds them. I don't. I'm sort of hit or miss. I don't mind the sprung buffers whether they're there or not. The fact is, if the model runs and it looks good, I honestly don't mind. Um, so you just got the standard tension lock. Now this is in a NEM 362 pocket. If you don't know what that is, go and Google it. Um, we've also got some lamp brackets on the on the back there, and some, as always, uh, so, do -do 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 those things, handrails. <laughs> um, and we've got some uh, the water filler and a what I would think is. A pressurization -y dome, you know, to um, keep the air steady or whatever. I know, I know what it does. Now, there's a brief, brief look at the cab detail. I'm going to unscrew the tender from the loco, and you can see what really a masterpiece this is. And it'll give me a chance to show you the tender loco connection. So we'll do that now. Right, so I've unscrewed the loco on the tender just using a little screw like this, um, which was severely out of focus, but there you go. But look, look at that. You've got, uh, now you can't see everything, but I'll give you a few detailed pictures in a moment. But you've got the regulator there and all the pressure valves and all the valves in general, all the, um, the gauges, the fire hole door, um, and cab seats, which are very nice. Um, now, it is actually quite a stunning cab, to be honest. And right now, I'll, I'll um, show a couple of pictures in detail of the full cab. <laughs> Right, so we're going to get on to the running bit now. I hope you liked this, because it was a very lovely review to film. Um, so, and we're only halfway through, of course. So um, we're going to uh, film the running bit now. I've still got to screw the tender and the loco back together. And what I thought, even though it's not prototypical, is we're going to put um, the teaks on it, because Eastern Region and all that. So uh, we'll fly over to the layout. And we'll see how she performs. Right, guys, so we've got the locomotive. That's about to go on the track, somewhere here, uh, it's not the hardest loco to put on, just six drivers, a bogey in the tender, um, if I zoom out a bit, see where we are, we're by the engine shed, I give it a little quick little wiggle, she runs beautifully and I've put the tender on, the tender's off, no! There we go. This thing actually has very nice slow speed.
That for a steam locker is very good. Anyway, so we've got the teaks up there. Go and couple up. Hopefully it couples okay. Yes, look at that. How lovely does that look? Um, so, we'll uh, get some running shots of her and we'll be back for a conclusion and my final thoughts. Well, what a model this is. The Hornby B1, absolutely stunning. Can't believe my eyes. It is actually a beautiful model, guys. If you see one for a good price, which you can, um, I suggest you buy it. It's absolutely stunning. I hope you liked it behind the rake of teaks over there. It, it did actually look very nice. You could say, well, no, you couldn't actually, don't worry. But um, it's a lovely model, lovely detail, absolutely stunning performance. Um, and in, yeah, if, if you're into LNER or BR Eastern Region, get one. I think they're doing one in um, British Railways Green with British Railways on the tender um, in the 2015 Hornby range. Um, so that should be a lovely release too. Absolutely stunning model. 10 out of 10 from me, absolutely flawless, with a few modifications like adding of the detail, 
another coal load. It just hooks gorgeous. So, guys, uh, that's it from me for this video. I will see you, as always, next week. But, for now, see you later. And also, I'm planning a special video involving this and the Class 25, which should... Uh, 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 can't speak. Which should see a very nice video made. So, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Like me on Facebook as Cruiseley Road 4472. And as always, guys, see you later.